This is the Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing for week ending February 9th, 2013. This week, the media is addressed by Chief Secretary of London. This is the carnival season and I want to uh, extend, of course, best wishes to all of Tobago for a highly enjoyable uh, carnival celebration and, of course, one that is safe and one where the, the standard of the performances, whether it's the Calypso or the, the Mass, uh, are even better than in previous years. I think over the years we have seen an improvement in our carnival celebrations and I don't expect this year to be any exception. Uh, we were treated to some scintillating pan displays uh, at the Dwight York Stadium uh, last evening and I, I want to congratulate uh, all the participants because I think all the bands reached uh, a very high standard uh, but I particularly of course want to congratulate the big winner Buccaneers, they've always been there and thereabouts, and so I get the feeling that today, this year could be their year. And uh, Buccaneers, Cats and Jammers, very consistent, Steel Explosion, and of course the lone representative in the large man category in the national finals, the Bethel based uh, band that has been always uh, there or thereabouts over the last uh, many years, Redemption song setters and of course i'd like to congratulate uh, former assemblyman mr steve jack and his metro stars for their performance and their their winning the small man category and again my congratulations to all the participants i must say that i am heartened by the early signals coming from the central government after the recently held to big house of assembly election as you know, I would have written to the Prime Minister uh, requesting a meeting with her. And, and it was quite encouraging that within 48 hours of the receipt of the, of the uh, request, I got a response from the office of the Prime Minister indicating that she would like to meet with me or she'd be available to meet with me at a mutually convenient time and place. That time has been decided. It is the 21st of this month uh, at 4 p.m. And of course, I'm looking forward to that being the first of many meetings uh, between the Prime Minister and myself over the years. Uh, I had put on the agenda uh, three items. The review of the process for the granting of internal self-government to Tobago the review of the relationship between the Minister of Government and Secretaries in the Tobago House of Assembly, and funding for housing programs in Tobago. After consultation with the Secretaries, uh, I would also, uh, of course, try to raise with the Prime Minister the issue of the board selection. Uh, this has been a long-standing issue. Uh, in fact, I can remember my first letter to the Prime Minister or among my first letters to the Prime Minister would have been one requesting her intervention in the selection of boards and what seemed to be the tendency of the central government to, to uh, in a way, delink itself from the policies of the past, whereby the Tobago House of Assembly would have been represented on boards where the, 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 those boards dealt with issues over which the Tobago House of Assembly had some jurisdiction. This process led to a situation, or this, this, this posture, sorry, led to a situation where, whereas at one time the, the Tobago House of Assembly would have been uh, represented on over 30 boards, it went down to somewhere in between four and five. And we see this even around Carnival time, where uh, the, with the last change in the, 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 the board uh, the, 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 the Carnival uh, Development um, Board, the last change saw uh, a removal of the Tobago House of Assembly representative and no replacement. So we actually have a situation where the input of the Tobago House of Assembly and the input of Tobago into this process, that that in input is not there. 
And it, to a certain extent, it, it, it does create some challenges in the decision-making process. So I, I am very uh, hopeful that the Prime Minister would uh, be in a position to respond to this request and that we can have a situation where on the critical boards, the Tobago House of Assembly has a representation. And I want to make it very clear that our intention is not that there should be no Tobagonians on the board who are not representative of the Tobago House of Assembly. What we're saying is that the Tobago House of Assembly as an institution should be represented so that the views of the Tobago House of Assembly and the policies and the, and the, and the activities of the Tobago House of Assembly in that particular area could form part of the decision-making process. But I wish to reiterate, as I said, my, 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 my comfort with, the, with the, the posture of the Prime Minister and a speedy response to my request for a meeting and the carding of the meeting uh, in a fairly expeditious manner. Uh, we've also met with the Minister of Tourism. In fact, I've met with the Minister of Tourism on two occasions uh, in, in, in less than a week. And um, on both occasions, I think the, the meetings were quite fruitful. And again, we, we, we had a posture of collaboration and a desire to, to, to work together in the interests of the people of Tobago. Uh, our last meeting was, was quite interesting, where one of the major issues raised was the issue of the, the uh, Foreign Investment Act. And I was able, with uh, the Chief Administrator and Mr. Wilson, the advisor to the Secretary of Tourism, who were there, to explain to the minister and, and to a certain extent deal with some misinformation about the Tobago House of Assembly's position with respect to the Foreign Investment Act. And I indicated to him that what the Tobago House of Assembly and the central government at that time were trying to do was to create, to nurture an environment that encouraged investment but discouraged speculation. And I indicated to him that we were operating in a situation where for 20, more than 20 years, of the Foreign Investment Act, not a single major investment in tourism was made in Tobago. And while that was happening or that was not happening, we had a situation where the lands in Tobago were being uh, sold and resold and there was rampant speculation. And you actually created an environment in which the people of Tobago and the people of the country of Trinidad and Tobago were competing against persons coming in to buy second and third houses, even in the communities, not in the, the so-called high-end residential areas, but even within the, the communities. And therefore, that is why the licenses regime was in fact triggered. But what we did, and I think this is something that, that a lot of people tend to forget, is that we set up in Tobago special development areas. These were areas that were deemed to be highly suitable for investment. And we made it much, more, much easier sorry, for uh, companies and, 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 and individuals to invest in these areas. And of course, one of the discussions we had with the minister was how could we make it easier, even easier, for persons to uh, be able to make investment, and how could we make it more beneficial, what kind of incentives can be given. I think the minister has begun to understand that contrary to what the Attorney General, uh, you know, the statement made by the Attorney General, that this assembly or this administration is not interested in deterring investment. In fact, all its policies have been geared towards encouraging investment all that it was doing was to ensure that the rampant speculation, which was taking place uh, in the early 2000s, that that rampant speculation was in fact curtailed. Uh, we did accept the fact that the, the process, the administrative process was taking too long and efforts would be made, uh, efforts are being made to ensure that the, that, that time frame is lessened significantly. 
The other areas that we, we, we would have discussed had to do with the Virgin Airlines, and there is a strong possibility that there could be some good news coming out of Virgin within the next couple of months, but I don't want to preempt that. But while we are on airlift, a very important event is happening uh, in Sweden over the, over the carnival period. In fact, the, the Secretary of Tourism, Deputy Chief Secretary Tracy Davis and Celestine, is due to leave Tobago on Carnival Monday for the launch of the Scandinavian, the flight out of Scandinavia. Uh, and that, that launch takes place on the 13th of February. This is one of the more important uh, events in the tourism sector for a number of years. That flight, uh, that, 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 that those flights will start in November 2013 and they'll run for the entire uh, winter season, uh, bringing to Tobago uh, 306 passengers per rotation. Uh, and, and that is quite significant and that would, of course, uh, make a significant dent in the, in the, in the, in the kind of challenges which we, we're facing in the tourism sector. There is some Encouraging news coming out of uh, Canada, and uh, things are we're very close to uh, locking down a, an arrangement with a Canadian airline. And of course, the bookings, the pre bookings coming out of the United Kingdom and even out of Germany are quite encouraging. And with the, the tourism, the cruise ship arrivals also on the increase, and uh, you know. Despite the, the protestations and the admonition of a, a very high-ranking uh, religious figure, uh, the domestic tourism continues on the rise. I, I think that uh, we could be seeing a beginning of the upsurge that we've been looking for in the tourism sector. And that is something that we, we need to treat with. We are going to be debating a very important motion uh, in the House. And uh, I think that it's a motion that signals very clearly where we are with respect to our, our vision for governance in Tobago. And the motion reads like this. Whereas the recently concluded Tobago House of Assembly election has produced a result that does not include the opportunity for a minority presence in this assembly, and whereas despite the absence of any opposition voice in the House, this administration remains committed to the further enhancement of the democratic process in Tobago. Be it resolved that this House endorses strategies and initiatives proposed by the Executive Council for the further enhancement of the democratic process in Tobago. And the point that I, I made the last time and I wish to reiterate today is that the election result, the 12 nil result, that meant there is no minority voice. We do not see it as a challenge. We see it as an opportunity to introduce a different kind of governance into Tobago, a more participatory form of go governance, whereby the people and the institutions, civil society, uh, the church, everybody, uh, can see themselves as playing a role in governance and structures be set up to us to give them the opportunity to participate in the governance of the island. We'll be able to, to lay out uh, some of the strategies and initiatives which we have discussed with various uh, individuals and various institutions, and I think uh, which should uh, give the people of Tobago some comfort that despite the election results, or maybe because of the election result. Uh, we are in a position where we can treat with this process. I was very encouraged by a meeting which I had with the Chamber of Commerce yesterday. Uh, and at that meeting, we were able to uh, discuss some of our strategies and initiatives. And I must say that uh, the, the principle was endorsed by the Chamber. Of course, we'll have to work out the details. But the impression that I get from them is that they are going to be uh, quite, quite collaborative. I intend to have other meetings with representatives of the churches, the trade unions, 
community groups, youth groups over the next uh, couple of weeks. Because what we're hoping to do is that by the, the end of the, uh, you know, this, the, 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 the next two months or so, uh, to have an interest group comprising representatives of these major sectors and that this, this group will be able to interface directly with the, with, the, um, with, the, with the executive council, as I said the last day, to make sure that uh, their views and their recommendations become part of the process. Now, in order for that to happen, it, 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 it means that our secretaries and assistant secretaries have to be able to perform the role of leaders and, 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 and uh, either we talk about them as servant leaders, they have to be in a position to guide, they have to be in a position to lead, they have to be in a position to uh, participate, they have to be, you know, sufficiently uh, okura with what is going on, but also receptive to new ideas. And therefore, the training of the secretaries and assistant secretaries will continue. And on the 15th and 16th of next month, There'll be a follow-up to that earlier orientation session which we had at Mount Turvin a couple of weeks ago, just after the inauguration. Uh, and that, that is going to take place at the same venue at Mount Turvin, the 15th and 16th. Again, we're going to be bringing the secretaries and the administrators together because it is our belief that uh, it, the, the secretary and the administrator in each division have to be seen as a team. And therefore, we, we want to nurture that kind of camaraderie, that kind of, that collegial kind of, of, of uh, role, so that at the end of the exercise, we are expecting that together they'll be able to, to lead the, the, the process, developmental process in each of, the, each, of the, each of the divisions. So that is on the 15th and the, and the 16th of this month. And of course, we'll have other training and sensitization sessions as we go forward. One of the things about that we're going to be stressing is the need for secretaries and assistant secretaries to remain in constant communication with the people who have elected them and the people whom they have pledged to serve. And I wish to reiterate that I, I have you know, a lot of uh, confidence in the the caliber and the personality and the posture and of the assemblymen and the secretaries and assistant secretaries. Uh, and I have every confidence that they will continue to demonstrate those kind of qualities that enabled them, us to select them in the first place. You have to be thankful for mercies, uh, small mercies and other mercies. There was a presentation uh, made by the ministry on repairs to the airport. We are grateful that some work is being done on the, the leaking roof and the check-in space, the VIP lounge, uh, and of course, uh, you know, more accommodation for the international arrivals. But uh, these are minor amendments or minor, minor repairs, and they do not treat with some of the major concerns raised by airlines like Virgin, uh, who have requested, you know, a major, uh, ma 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 major renovation or major upgrade of the facility. And we raised the matter with the Minister of Tourism, although that doesn't come under his direct portfolio. And he has promised to examine it with his colleagues because he too understands that one of the major concerns which airlines like Virgin have with us in Tobago is the, the quality of our, of our airport facilities. And except, except that is addressed, I uh, will not be able to compete on a level playing field with most of our rivals, uh, or most, most of our competitors in the region. So that is something, something that we need, to, we need to look at. So uh, we do look forward, as I indicated, to a more positive trend in the tourism sector. And I want all of us in Tobago to understand that if that positive trend is to continue, 
or to be is to be maintained, every Tobagonian has to play a role. Because the type of tourist tourism we sell in Tobago is a people centered tourism. And whether you are, you know, a worker in a in a in a hotel or a guest house, whether you are a vendor who is interfacing with a tourist, or just somebody who the tourist is passing on the road, uh, it's an experience that we're selling. And consequently, we've got to make sure that that experience is a pleasant one. And it, all of us have a role to play in making the tourist experience as pleasant as possible, and thereby encouraging him or her to return as quickly and as often as possible. I have been hearing about the experiment to come with working with NGOs and CBOs and other interest groups, hopefully to act as a stopgap measure in the absence of an opposition. But one of the things that I'm, 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 I'm a little concerned about at this stage is that, as Chief Secretary, you're saying that there will be a reporting system to the Executive Council by these groups. Uh, they meet and probably interact and, 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 and share concerns and probably try to address in that kind of environment. But something would be wrong with if that is the format, because remember, if there's the presence of a minority group in there, they will ask questions in the interest of the public. They, they, almost everything they do is in the interest of the public. So I'm kind of wondering this format that, 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 you, that you've mentioned before and you've mentioned again, whether this format isn't an inclusive format as against one where the public will benefit from the, 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 the model, the design that you all are thinking about at this time? Well, I think that um, the, the group, the makeup of that group is something that has to be discussed. And there's no reason why that group cannot include members of representatives of political parties. It's just a matter of how, how as you say, how extensive and how representative you want to make the group. I don't think I don't think that we will have significant objection to representatives of political parties, but then but then w why would one feel that people who are not representative of political parties can cannot represent the, the interests of the people? Because if you see, if you have, for example, uh, trade unions, you have you have the business community, you have youth groups, you have community groups, you have the press. I, I, I don't see why in that environment the interests of the of the uh, the wider public would not be would not be uh, represented. It sounds to me mm -hmm. like this group is going to interact with the executive council, bring their concerns to the executive council. Then the executive council will seek to address these concerns as against a system where the public is exposed to the, the concerns that these groups will raise. Remember we also indicated that as part of the process, we're going to be having monthly meetings in each of the electoral district reporting meetings. And at each meeting, you discuss the issues having to treat with that electoral issue, district, along with the issues relevant to one division. So if you go to Keenan Bonacord, we discuss Keenan Bonacord, and we might discuss health and social services. So anybody from any place can come to that meeting and participate in that discussion. And we're also hoping that we'll be able to have those meetings carried live so that people would participate. We also indicated that we, we're going to set up, I, I, I haven't got a name yet, a public info, in, interest desk, if you want to put it like that, where people can send in concerns and questions and so on. And these questions will be answered by the secretaries by making statements at the, at the, um, at the plenary sessions and so on. B basically, this is a work in motion. And I am willing to, you know, as just as you made that observation and maybe, maybe a criticism and maybe a recommendation, I think this is, the kind of, this is the kind of posture that we have to adopt. I don't claim to have all the answers. Just how you, you get an idea and you haven't fleshed it out yet, there's something that I'm thinking about that I'm, I'm not fleshed out yet. It's, well, I don't want to say it's a month, but a couple of weeks now, the, the secretaries have been in office. How is the new... How is the new assembly going? The secretaries, what's the report, what's the feedback? 
Well, it, it's like when you start everything. There, there's a lot of excitement. There is some apprehension. I, I think that uh, you know people are functioning at a level with which I'm not uncomfortable. Uh, people make mistakes. They'll be perceived to. Sometimes they don't, and sometimes they just perceive to have made mistakes. But it's a learning process. And even even in my, in my from my perspective, even after being on the job for, for so long, uh, some aspects is a learning process for me too because I, I'm learning to to deal with a, a new kind of um, uh, executive. It's the largest that I've had to deal with. It's the youngest and least experienced. But I think therein also lies, you know, a kind of uh, learning that I get from these young people who have a, a different perspective uh, and communicate differently and bring different issues and prioritize differently from, from the way we were doing it. And I, I, think, I think it's an interesting time and I don't see anything uh, that should dishearten me going forward. But it, it's not perfect, but it, it, it's improving. Mr. Jack has been retained as the political leader of the TOP following his embarrassing defeat at the THA polls. Um, what are your views on this? And do you intend to include him in any of the um, activities of the Tobago House of Assembly or decisions that will be made? So I have no comment to make on Mr. Jack's position or Mr. Jack's decision. Uh, with respect to his inclusion, uh, when the dust has settled and, and uh, you know, they, I'm aware of what they intend to do and what their posture is to development in Tobago generally, I will make a decision. But, but from a policy perspective, I will have no objection to involving them in any discussion. But of course, I am not going to make a victim of myself. Uh, I will have to evaluate how they are treating with this whole trust and whether they buy into the philosophy and the vision. And if they do, well, then I can include them. But I'm not going to, uh, you know, just make a sacrifice of myself until I'm certain. I have to be certain that they are having fact bought into this new vision for governance in Tobago. Thank you for watching the Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing for week ending February 9th, 2013. For the Department of Information, I am Sophie Guillaume.